to share a few different ways that children can enjoy creating process art while also playing outside. And remember grown-ups, process art is meant to be fun and open-ended, so it's all about letting your child explore, experiment, and enjoy the experience of creating art. So we're going to be painting and stamping with some things that you might already play with in your own backyards or in a swimming pool. Things like a swim noodle, I also have a balloon that's filled with water and my balloon can bounce. And I have something that I think you all enjoy. Can you guess what's in this bottle? Let's find out. That's right, bubbles. So we're going to use all of these fun materials to create our backyard process art. I'm also going to use tempera paint and watered down food color. So if you have these, you can use those, or you can use any other age appropriate paint that you already have. Also for young toddlers and infants, you can use this recipe to make your own homemade paint. This is a paint that we like to use at the museum in our infant classes. Okay, I think we're ready to have some fun creating our backyard process art. To paint with bubbles, you'll need a bottle of bubble solution, a few shallow bowls or dishes, you'll need bottles of food color, or if you don't have this, you can use liquid watercolor paint if you have that at home. You'll also need either a piece of a swim noodle or an empty plastic bottle, and you'll need an old sock and a rubber band. So blowing bubbles in your yard is lots of fun, but it's also fun to paint with bubbles. So we're gonna make our bubbles have lots of cool colors. So in each bowl, I've put about a fourth cup of the bubble solution. And then I've also put about 10 drops of food color into the bowl and then mixed it really well to combine them. So you can make as many different colors as you want. Each color will be in its own bowl. And then to make your bubble blower, you can either use the one that comes in your bubble solution or you can make your own. So I have a piece of a swim noodle. Swim noodles can be cut pretty easily with a sharp kitchen knife, but this is something that a grown-up will need to help with. And I also have a plastic bottle. This can also be cut in half, but again, that's a job for a grown-up to do. And then what you're going to do is take your old sock, you're gonna stretch it over the top of your swim noodle, and then you're gonna secure it with a rubber band. So you can see one end is covered with the sock, and the other end has a hole. The same thing with the plastic bottle. You're gonna keep the top that has the part that you drink out of, and you're going to slide your sock onto the bottle, and then also secure it with a rubber band. Okay, and you can see it's nice and tight on that end. And then you have the opening here for you to blow into. All right, so let's see what happens when I use my bubble blower. So I think I'll try my swim noodle first. So I have this hole and that's where you're going to blow the air. But first you need to get some of the colorful bubble solution. So I'm gonna start, I think with my purple. I'm gonna take this and just dip it into the solution. Get it nice and wet. And then let's see what happens when I blow through the hole. All right, ready to see what happens? And I have a piece of paper on my table. I'm gonna blow my bubbles onto my piece of paper. So let's see what happens. Can you see all the bubbles that are coming out? Kind of looks like a big bubble tube or a bubble snake. And I'm just gonna let those kind of lay on my paper like that. And then maybe I wanna take this and I have some blue bubble solution and maybe I'll dip it in the blue. Let's see what happens if I do blue. And I'll do some blue maybe on this part of my paper over here, ready? It's really cool. And then I'll let that sit on my paper. And let's see what happens if I use my bottle. Let's see if it does anything different. So I've got my bottle in my green. I'm gonna give it a little dip. And let's give that a blow. I'm gonna find a part of my paper. You can always turn your paper if you need to get to another part of it. I'm gonna blow some green bubbles right here. 
makes some really big bubbles, doesn't it? You can see I've got my green bubbles. And then I also have some pink. So let's see what happens if I add pink. I'm gonna dip it in my bowl. You can even do the standing up with your paper on the ground or on the floor if you want your bubbles to really fall down onto your paper. So I think I have a little bit of room over here. I'm gonna put some pink bubbles. And you can see, I could keep going, and I have kind of a big, cool bubble cloud on my piece of paper. So what you'll do, you can put as many bubbles as you want, and you'll let that just sit, and you can watch your bubbles kind of fizz and pop. And then when you're all done, you might have a pattern that looks like this. So you can see the bubbles give your paper a really cool texture, and you can really see where the bubbles were popping on your paper. So have fun painting with bubbles. For this art project, we're going to be painting with ice cubes. To make your own ice cube paint brushes, you'll just need a few simple things you can find around your home. You'll need an ice cube tray. If you don't have an ice cube tray, you can also just use a muffin tin or any other small plastic containers you have around your house. You'll also need some water. And to color your water, we're going to use bottles of food color. This one is a set of neon food color, but you can use anything you have around your house or if you have liquid watercolor paint, you can also use that. And then the last thing you'll need are some craft sticks. So to make your ice cube paint brushes, you're going to take your ice cube tray and in one section, you'll put about 10 drops of food color and then you'll fill it the rest of the way with water and you'll make as many as you'd like for your paint brushes. And then you can take a craft stick and place it in the ice cube tray for a handle. So once you have these made, you can stick it in your freezer and leave it in there for a couple hours to let it freeze. And then once it's frozen, you're ready to paint. So I have my paper clipped onto a piece of cardboard leaning against a tree. I'm doing this outside, but you can also do this on a flat surface like a table if you rather do it that way. But I thought it might be interesting to see what happens to the paint if my paper is leaning against the tree. Another thing I wanted to mention is that for your handles, if you don't have craft sticks, you can use things like a stick from your yard. That will also work great. If you have a younger child who kind of needs a chunkier handle, who needs something more to grip, you could use something like a clothespin. So just be creative with the things you have around your house. Okay, so once your ice cubes are frozen, you can begin to paint. I'm going to move my paper a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna start with, uh, I think my blue and see what happens. So I'm gonna rub my blue ice chunk on my paper, kind of in a kind of in a curvy line. Let's see what happens. So you can paint like this straight from your freezer, but something else I like to do is to use a wet on wet watercolor technique. So I have a bottle with just plain water and I'm gonna use this to spritz my paper. Now if you don't have a, a bottle sprayer, you can just use a paintbrush and water, but I'm gonna give this a good spray and get my whole piece of paper wet. All right, I think that's probably good enough. And now let's see what happens when I paint. Let's see if the paint does something different. Again, I'll put this up close so you can see what's happening. And I'm gonna take my purple ice cube paintbrush and start painting some more lines. And can you see what's happening? That's right. The water is mixing with the paint and it's making the paint move around and the colors are swirling together. And because my paper is leaning against the tree because it's standing up, can you also see how it's starting to drip? So maybe I'll add a little bit of pinkish red to my painting and see what happens. So I'll swirl and mix my colors and let it drip down. And as you're painting, especially if it's a warm day, your ice cubes will start to melt and your paint will get more liquidy and will blend together. 
You could even play some sounds of water while you're doing this and think about water and waves as you're mixing your colors. Maybe I'll put a little lime green in. Let's see what happens with that. So you can have lots of fun just swirling your colors around and letting them mix and drip any way that you want. Now you can just leave your painting like this and let it dry or you can do something else that's kind of cool. You can take salt and sprinkle it on your painting while the paint is still really wet. And then as your paint dries, the salt will soak up or absorb some of the paint. And when it's all dry, you can brush the salt off and see how your painting looks. The salt will make a really cool effect on your painting. So you can either paint just with your ice cube brushes or you can add some salt and try that out and do a little experiment with that. So that's painting with ice cubes. I'm going to show you some fun ways to paint and stamp with things that you can also use to play with in your backyard. So for this project, we're going to use a water balloon. Also a piece of a swim noodle. I have just a plain piece and I also have a piece that I've covered with bubble wrap and secured with a rubber band. And then something else that we use at the museum sometimes are our sponge brushes. And some of you might have something, sometimes they're called splash balls that you use in the backyard or in your pool and you get them really wet and you throw them back and forth and when you catch it, it kind of gives you a splash. So you can make your own splash ball out of sponges, but you can also use it to paint with. So what I did, I took two clean kitchen sponges I cut each one the long way into four sections. So I had four strips and I did that with each sponge. So you have a total of eight. And then you're gonna gather those eight pieces and in the middle, you're gonna secure it with a rubber band or a piece of twine. And then you've got a really fun sponge ball, okay? If you want to use it like this, you can just stamp it. But if you want a handle, you can also add a stick from your yard. I've got a chopstick that I'm just gonna slide into the middle and then I have a sponge brush. So let's see what we can create with all of these fun brushes. So let's start with, I think, our water balloon. And it's really fun because it can bounce, it can swirl. See what kind of ways you can find to paint with your water balloon. So I think I'm gonna start by just kind of bouncing it in the, I'll do yellow and blue paint. And then I'm just going to kind of bounce it on my paper. I can twirl it and move it around. There's lots of fun ways you can paint with the water balloon. And then I've got something like that. You can see the colors are kind of mixing and swirling around. All right, another thing you can do with a water balloon that I found was really fun. You can tie a string to your water balloon and you can put your paper and paint tray on the ground and you can stand above your paper and you can bounce it in the paint tray and then you can bounce and swirl it on your paper. So I'm sitting down, but you can do this standing up and it's a lot of fun to do that. I made one standing up and this is how it turned out. So you can see it makes some really cool patterns and lines when you paint that way. And also it's a good way to kind of put your whole body into it because you're really moving around and using your whole body instead of just your hand. So it's really fun to try that. All right, we have our swim noodle. So you can see it's kind of got what shape? Yeah, it's kind of a circle. Kind of looks like a donut, doesn't it? So let's see what happens if I, am gonna bounce that in my, I think I'll try yellow and pink. And then I'm gonna hop it on my paper all over, hop, hop. I'll get a little more paint, pop it some more. Ready to see what it looks like. So you can see it made kind of some donut shapes on my paper, didn't it? But what about the one that's covered in bubble wrap? Let's see what that'll do. I think I'll do some pink and purple, just kind of bouncing it around in my pink and purple. Let's see what it looks like on the paper. And I'll add some on my paper. Wow, check this out. Look at those cool patterns. It kind of reminds me of a beehive too. Lots of little circles. All right, we have one more thing to try. Our sponge brush. And remember, you can take this off the handle and just use it 
in your hand or you can use the handle to bounce it. So let's see if I can just kind of hop it in lots of colors. You can see all the colors on my sponge brush. And I'm just gonna pop it on my paper or I could swirl it around. There's lots of ways to paint with these tools, which, what's, which is what makes it so fun. And then now, look at my painting. It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? So you can try um, some of these techniques. You can try them all, depending on what you have around your house. But remember, just have fun with it. And I really hope that you enjoy making art in your backyard. Thanks for joining me.